what is pharmacokinetic anyone what is pharmacokinetic bolo it composed of ki 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 part ache pharmacokinetic e absorption distribution metabolism and excretion so for, for absorption which part is absorption we are, we are taking the drug and drug goes into the systemic circulation up to this it is absorption and after that there is a distribution of the drug distribution absorption distribution metabolism and excretion for after absorption drugs goes into the systemic circulation systemic circulation that after that there are two things happens one is distribution of the drug and distribution means it binds with the tissues likely ki ki tissues sathe bind korte pare ha fat tissue muscle and there is also a thing before distribution there may be fast pass metabolism metabolism primarily occur after absorption and distribution but if it is occurred before distribution it it call fast pass metabolism kothay hoy fast pass metabolism liver anything else ar kotha hote pare kidney te fast pass metabolism ha eh? liver anything else other than liver it may occur in the gi tract fast pass metabolism can occur in two places primarily liver and second one is the gi tract after that after absorption and distribution and before metabolism before metabolism primarily drug acts that means there is pharmacodynamic portion pharmacodynamic portion of drug occurs between distribution and metabolism some drugs has occur their action occur after the after the metabolism and it's called if it is primary drug is inactive and their metabolite is active their metabolite is active then after metabolism it has it can occur the primary pharmacological action active metabolite then it is called active metabolite then after metabolism what happen we need to the body need to excrete the drug eliminate the drug from the body why if it is accumulate inside the body what will occur there will be a toxicity so absorption absorption up to up to systemic circulation then there is a distribution in different tissues after that there is metabolism and after metabolism there is a excretion then where this pharmacodynamic or drug action occur primarily in between in between the distribution and metabolism if a drug has a active metabolite then their action may be increase after metabolism clear example ekta active metabolite in example like digipam clear they are act, they have some active metabolite so their action will increase after metabolism so there are four part absorption distribution metabolism and excretion now another thing why we are calling systemic circulation what is the difference between local action of a drug and systemic action porano hoy jeta local action and systemic action porano hoy ni local action means if a drug suppose there is a allergic skin disease we apply some topical drugs it is systemic or local it is local very good now uh, if, if we have a we have a fever we take paracetamol so this is a example of a systemic why systemic ha ha bolo bolo it it goes into the 
blood and start its action. Okay, very good. Then now you tell me how many you have a uh, bronchial asthma and you have to take inhaler during the uh, uh, December or January. How many of you? Anyone? No one in the hospital. You have, you have to. Okay, now you tell me what are the drugs present in this inhaler? Salbutamol, Tarbutalin. There are three groups of drug. One is beta agonist, Tarbutalin, Salbutamol. One is anti mascarinic drug, Ipratropium, Tritropium bromide. And third one is steroids, inhalational steroids. Now you tell me that this drug is systemic or local? How many you are telling it is systemic? Local, okay. Now you tell me why it is systemic? So if you have to say it is systemic, drug have to go into the systemic circulation to reach its site of action. Now this site of action is bronchial smooth muscle, bronchial smooth muscle. Now you tell me is it required to have this molecule to reach bronchial smooth muscle going to the systemic circulation? Is it required? You take it inhalationally and huh? Lagbe? Lagbe na lagbe na? Systemic circulation is jawad door kani. Now that is local action. Root is inhalational. Now she is telling the inhalational comes under systemic circulation. Then you give me an example of a drug which is given inhalationally but it is a systemic action. Give an example. I am telling that drug taking inhalational root acting systemically. Give an example. Huh? Anyone? Huh? Huh? Jode bolo. Shunto achino bolo. Nasal drug. Opioids. Opioids giving inhalational root. Cocaine. We are going. What then you? First, first, what is drug? What is drug? Definition of a drug. It is a substance which is used or intend to be used to modify physiological condition or alter pathological system. The last line is most important. To benefit of the recipient. Cocaine is not the benefit of the recipient. So, it is not comes under drug at least in pharmacology. So, clear. So, it is not a, so give an example of a drug in, in pharmacology which can give in a systemic route but acting as, as a, a inhalation rule acting as a systemic. So, are you talking about it? Inhalation are general anesthetics. Inhalational general anesthetics. Now you tell me where it acts. General anesthetics. Kothay kaj kothay bade? CNS brain to reach to reach the systemic circulation uh, to reach the CNS. Is it required to go into the systemic circulation? Yes or no? So it is it is under systemic circulation. So root is inhalational. If it is if it is inhalational drugs in bronchial asthma like like beta agonist anti mascarinic drug or inhalational corticosteroid these are all local type of action because it doesn't require to go into the systemic circulation for its action whereas whereas when we discuss about the inhalational general anesthetics Though the root of administration is inhalational, inhalational, but it is a systemic route because to reach that target site of the drug, that is CNS, it required, it required to go through the systemic circulation. Clear it? Arectogenes, all oral drugs primarily is a lo local or systemic, it is systemic. Most of that, but there are drugs which you give orally can act locally. 
suppose a antibiotic that is not absorbed in the upper GIT go into the lower GIT namely neomycin neomycin cannot be absorbed in the upper GIT goes into the lower GIT and it inhibits the colonic bacteria how it helps it prevents to generate the NH3 ammonia and prevent hepatic encephalopathy so in this case neomycin though it given orally it is a local action their action is local but paracetamol other antibiotics all these drugs which is absorbed from the upper GIT goes into the systemic circulation to reach the their target organ it is systemic whereas there is an example of oral route can be local clear now so here the bloodstream meets systemic blood systemic venous blood primarily clear so absorption distribution metabolism and excretion i think absorption distribution metabolism is covered already yes How, what are the different phases of metabolism phase 1 and phase 2 very good phase 1 means what are the uh, reaction in the phase 1 oxidation very good and what are the example of phase 2 Did you, huh? Bolo? methylation acetylation glucuronidation that means it is a synthetic so first pair it makes it it makes it more polar whereas in the second phase it make it, it make more molecular weight so that it cannot be reabsorbed after metabolism most of the drug can be excreted excretion is what are the primary route of excretion through the kidney by the urine some of them can go through the after metabolism through the fecus and there are some drugs they have some other routes like alcohol alcohol route of elimination is excel lung through the lung most of this alcohol excreted clear some few, few amount of the drug can be excreted through the sweat but primary one is urine through kidney or through fecus through the for, through the bile again other route of excretion like alcohol through the lung by the excel some drugs can be eliminated through the sweat also now third portion is that not all the drugs requires metabolism or go through the metabolism for excretion example is lithium lithium where it is used lithium lithium used in bipolar disorder lithium is used in bipolar disorder where this lithium drug doesn't go through the metabolism they can directly excrete it so for their purpose there is a absorption there is a distribution no metabolism direct excretion clear there are examples like that also so for abs after absorption from the drug doses form they release they go into the solution get into go, go into the blood blood there are two portion one is free and one is protein bound this protein bound means albumin or basic drug in the blood suppose the drug has a high protein bound distribution will be high or low low very good if a drug has a less protein bound then that dis distribution will be high now give a example how it can can affect the pharma the pharmacotherapeutics if a drug has a very high volume of distribution what will be the effect distribution jodi high hoy kono drug e ha power power kom thakbe na amra pharmacotherapeutic e ki korbo mane drug ta ki korte hobe বেশি ডোজ দিতে হবে বেশি ডোজ একবারে দেওয়াকে কি বলে লোডিং ডোজ देयर আর एग्जांपल्स অফ আ ড্রাগ লাইক ক্লোরোকুইনিন ক্লোরোকুইন ইউজড ইন ম্যালেরিয়া ভেরি গুড 
in malaria chloroquine we have to give a high dose primarily why because it has a wide distribution volume of distribution is high so to reach its therapeutic concentration we have to give we have to give high dose of high dose of loading dose to take that concentration therapeutic concentration so so volume of distribution what is the importance of volume of distribution in pharmacotherapeutics it required if it is volume of distribution is high they may require a loading dose clear after that it metabolize and it excretes through the urine bile feces sweat and saliva and and during that there is also a distribution phase with the action site and storage site there are some drugs which can be stored in the in the fatty tissue and they can they can come after elimination from the blood they can revert back from the storage site to the blood the blood which is in action is associated with only which portion is in the blood not in the storage station but in the storage station can come into the blood and it it gives a longer duration clear after that there is a excretion what is biotransformation then biotransformation this is another term in the metabolism biotransformation so why pk study pharmacokinetic studies are important because if if toxic metabolite and drugs can accumulate inside the body they can cause as toxicity if there is a reduced amount of concentration in the blood there may be failure and drug can be rapidly metabolized when two drugs given simultaneously so to that calls ki bole eta ke induction and inhibition induction means one drug increase action of enzyme in the liver the enzyme concentration high holo then that enzyme metabolize other drug that lead to lower their concentration and that is therapeutic failure that is called induction of enzyme enzyme induction and enzyme inhibition means that there is a less amount of enzyme production so metabolism of other drug not their drug that drug is less so there will be accumulation of this drug inside the body lead to toxicity now the the excretion proper for excretion there are three part one is glomerular filtration number two is tubular reabsorption and third one is tubular secretion ki ki part holo tale glomerulus er ek tai seta hocche filtration number a tubule ki hoy dutu jinish hote pare reabsorption hote pare ar secretion hote pare this three part determinant that how much of this drug excreted or reab or how low of drug is excreted through the body so there is a glomerular filtration tubular reabsorption and tubular secretion so first part glomerular filtration for glomerular filtration the important thing how much of this drug is protein bound and the how much is the renal blood flow if the renal blood flow is high through the glomerulus that means the available portion of the drug which can be filtered will be increased similarly if protein bound portion of the drug is high then there will be less amount of drug is available for glomerular filtration clear glomerular filtration the factors affecting glomerular filtration is two things by two things one is protein binding of the drug which is inversely proportional if the drug is much more protein bound less amount of drug is available for glomerular filtration whereas the second portion is blood flow if blood flow is high there is a 
more amount of drugs available is for the glomerular filtration. So, it is it is not inversely proportional, it is proportional to the blood flow, renal blood flow. Clear? Th this is the first point, glomerular filtration. Now, it is not depend upon the lipid solubility of the drug because either it is bound or it is not bound. If it is not bound, it is depend upon the renal blood flow. It is not, the glomerular filtration is not determined by the lipid solubility of the drug. Whereas, tubular reabsorption, tubular reabsorption is primarily determined by the lipid solubility. If the drug is lipid soluble, it will be easily high amount will be reabsorbed. Clear? But so, lipid solubility is important for excretion of a drug, but not due to the glomerular filtration, but for the tubular reabsorption. Clear? Lipid soluble, if the drug is more lipid soluble, more amount of the drug will be reabsorbed. Ionized drug will be excreted by the kidney. So, the, explain why, why when, when a drug is, drug is acidic, make the urine acid. So, they are more, if the, if, if, if the uh, environment is acid, they, they will be less polar, more reabsorbed. Whereas, if the drug is basic, and we make the urine acidic, more amount of drug will be excreted. It is used in the toxicity. Acidic drug poisoning, urine should be alkalized by the sodium bicarbonate. Example of this acidic is, drug is aspirin, salicylates, barbiturates, these, these, are, these are acidic drug. So, if the urine is more alkali, alkyl, then what happened? More polar drug will be there, they will be easily excreted as there is less amount of drug will be reabsorbed. Similarly, if drug is basic drug poisoning like morphine, amphetamine, acid, uh, urine should be acidified. Clear? Glomerular filtration. Tubular reabsorption, tubular secretion. Glomerular filtration, it depends on renal blood flow protein binding. There is no importance of lipid solubility for the glomerular filtration. Lipid solubility is important for tubular reabsorption. Clear? If drug is lipid soluble, they will more reabsorb. So, to prevent that in case of drug toxicity, in for basic drug, we make the urine acidic, whereas acidic drug, we make the urine alkali. Clear? Now, the tubular secretion. Tubular secretion for tubular, it does not depend on lipid solubility or plasma protein binding. They have some ion channels who excreted or reabsorb prevent excretion of this acid or basic drug. Primarily drugs like penicillin which is exogenous, these ion channels trying to excrete it. Whereas uric acid which is a endogenous subject, substance they primarily absorb. So, if a same ion channel used by penicillin and uric acid and you, you are using a drug, so they can alter their reabsorption. The secretion is will be different, so less amount of the drug will be secreted or more amount of the, there will be alteration of secretion. 
for penicillin it is, will be more secretion whereas in case of uric acid less secretion clear so the three portion glomerular filtration reabsorption and and tubular secretion tubular secretion doesn't depend on the either on the uh, uh, lipid solubility or through the plasma protein binding plasma protein binding is important for glomerular filtration whereas lipid solubility is important for reabsorption tubular reabsorption now kinetics of the elimination kinetics of the elimination means how much amount of drug will be eliminated from the body and there is a clearance is, is, is a indicator clearance means it is the volume of the plasma which will be free of drug in a unit time clearance is the indicator of of the elimination of the drug from the body clear it can be first order and zero order first order means it is proportional to the concentration of the drug in the plasma one means it is the if the concentration of the drug in the body will increase there will be increase elimination clear whereas zero order means zero means 10 to the power zero means it is constant it is constant that means the constant amount of drug will be excreted it is independent of the concentration of the drug in the plasma clear first order and zero order is basic difference first order is the it is it will be the proportional to the concentration of the drug concentration of the drug in the plasma whereas it is a fixed amount of the drug will be excreted so if the concentration of the of the drug is increased in the blood one drug has a first order kinetic one drug has a zero order kinetic what will be the difficulty in two drugs if it is zero order kinetic there will be accumulation of the drug because there is a fixed amount of the drug will be excreted so there may be chances of toxicity is much more high in case of zero order kinetic clearance remains constant for the first order kinetic clearance is much more at the low concentration but in the higher concentration amount will be the fixed so clearance will be decrease in case of in case of zero order kinetic rate of elimination is dependent on the concentration in case of first order whereas in case of zero order it is independent on the of the concentration of the drug a fixed amount will be excreted most of the drug follows the first order kinetics half life is remain constant half life is remain constant for first order kinetic whereas half life is less in the low concentration but it will increases as the clearance will also increases with increasing dose because the amount of drug is fixed high so t half will increase clearance will be decreased only a few drugs is follow the zero order kinetics like alcohol some drugs in low dose follows first order kinetic but in the higher dose they can they goes into the zero order kinetic clear the most of the drug follows follows first order kinetics where clearance t half is same throughout the concentration whereas zero order kinetics purely followed by the alcohol some drug in lower concentration they they go through the first order kinetic as the concentration gets increases they may follow zero order kinetics in case of zero order kinetics there is no fixed amount fixed t half or fixed clearance with increasing increasing dose t half will be increased clearance will be decreased
clear so for first order kinetic thus it is like a straight line whereas for zero order it is a like a tumra to 11 12 porese ha it is a hyperbola like it is a hyperbola like so what are the drugs which follows the zero order kinetics warfarin alcohol aspirin theophylline tolbutamide and phenytoin we have to remember some of this alcohol aspirin then warfarin theophylline tolbutamide and phenytoin among these alcohol is a pure zero order kinetic other all other are other are increasing in the in the lower concentration they follow the first order kinetic in the higher concentration they follow the zero order kinetic now this is a how we can calculate the plasma half life now can you tell me in which route this drug has been given ha huh? i am very good even then you are seeing there are two, there is a first there is a sharp fall of concentration followed by a like a straight line this type of this type of kinetic shows by a drug called intravenous anesthetics sodium thiopentone in the first half there this t half is due to not only by the elimination but also due to the redistribution what is redistribution you heard the name redistribution this intravenous anesthetics when we give it first they have a very short half life and this short half life is not only elimination half life but also distribution half life as they are very lipophilic they goes and instantly go into the brain and do their action and that is depression of the cns after that what happened there is a redistribution of the drug that means from the brain it goes to the other tissue clear that is less less perfusion there where there is a less perfusion so there will be a fall of concentration in the cns so what happen jodi cns e concentration intravenous anesthetic e kome jay thiopentan sodium e patient became aroused to prevent that we have to give another anesthetic to prevent that arousal so first portion the sharp fall is due to the redistribution after that there is a elimination now come into the proper so how we can calculate t half t half from this chart what is t half then plasma half life it is the time taken by the drug to go to its half of its initial concentration clear so clearance is a clearance a unit ki hobe clearance a unit it is the volume of the plasma which is cleared off by a drug uh, of a drug in a unit time then what what will be the unit of clearance volume volume will be the unit part minute per second what will be the unit of t half it is the time taken by a drug to go into its half of its initial concentration tale second minutes clear now as the definition we have to take two concentration in the y axis initial there is four then there we take it for a half two so there will be a perpendicular from the four to the curve or straight line from the meeting point there will be another perpendicular in the x axis 
similarly as perpendicular from the two to the curve and from the meeting point there will be another another straight line to the x axis the difference difference is here here is difference koto hoyeche 8 minus 6 equals to 2 hours so in y by it can be that can be replaced by 10 and 14 so you have to know the mechanism so for 4 4 will have it will be 6 hours 2 is in the 8 hours so t half will be 8 minus 6 equals to 2 hours so t half of this drug is 2 hours now you tell me if we which type of elimination it is first order or zero order it is a first order so if we take another parameter from the 8 and 4 it will be also 2 hours but in case of zero order it may not be same it may not be same clear so what is t half what is clearance how we can calculate how we can calculate t half from this chart what are the other parameters we can calculate from this chart volume of distribution volume of distribution is area under the curve here it is iv if it is it is oral there will be from zero it is increase then there will be peak then there will be decrease due to the elimination the, then they are also we can calculate area under the curve is the volume of distribution here we can calculate t half we can calculate volume of distribution from this chart now if time zero there is percentile of elimination is zero after first first t half concentration will be 50 and 50 percent will be eliminated after second 75 percent will be eliminated after third it is 87 percent it has been seen after four to five for practical purpose we think the drug is eliminated clear it is more than 95 close to 95 then we think the another question came after how many t half for practical purpose we think that drug is completely eliminated if we go through this mathematics it will never be 100 percent clear but we for practical purpose we we consider after four to five t halves drug is eliminated completely eliminated from the body clear here we can so this this is a repeated dose repeated dose oral drug similarly repeated dose oral drug after four or five t half it is a steady state of concentration so four or five uh, five, five t half will re reduce the drug to the less than 5% close to 95% will be eliminated similarly steady state of concentration will be achieved after 4 to 5 t half similarly eliminated and steady state now dose strategy there are two type of dose concentration we have to calculate one is loading dose one is maintenance dose for loading dose you have to remember it will be volume of distribution in, into the target concentration volume of distribution into the target concentration but in some cases they are also give some bioavailability if bioavailability is 90 percent then what will happen how we can calculate accurately 90 percent taki in into korbo na divide korbo ekhan pojan to bujhte the loading dose kader di jader volume of distribution high loading dose how we can calculate volume of distribution dewa thakbe steady or concentration maintain concentration koto chai seta dewa thakbe dutu gun korle we can calculate loading dose now there is another catch 
they will say that drug has a 90% of bioavailability. Then 90% means 0.9 that will be into 0.9 or divide by 0.9. It will be divide by 0.9 because technically you, if you think then we have to give more drug or less drug if it is bioavailability is 0.9 we have to give more drugs. So the, the, the amount will be more. If we multiply with the 0.9 it will be less. If we divide it by the 0.9 that means we the amount will be high. So bioavailability will be in the it is divided by the bioavailability. So this is the loading dose volume of distribution into plasma concentration. Then it is another thing is maintenance dose. Maintenance dose will be clearance into the target plasma concentration. Clearance into the target plasma concentration. Now you tell me what is clearance? Clearance is the plasma which is wiped off with the concentration will be 0 in a unit time. So volume into plasma concentration. Plasma concentration and unit key? Gram per ml. Tale ml ml kete galo gram me thake galo. Tale unit glow dekhe. Jodi if you consider unit, maintenance dose will be come into the ki 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 unit thakbe. Maintenance dose de. Huh? Gram, weight, gram, milligram. So edhika milligram, clearance ki thakbe. Volume per minute, plasma concentration ki thakbe, gram per volume, Thale volume volume kete gyalo, gram per minute. Thikha the unit tau, jodhi tumhi calculate karo dhuton, thalo, ekhane jodhi biability diwa thakke ki hobe, ekhane biability diwa thakte bade, the drug has a biability of 70 percent, then you, you have to multiply or divide by 0.7, same thing it will be divide by 0.7 ঠিক আছে এই দুটো কিন্তু ক্যালকুলেশনে আসতে পারে প্র্যাকটিক্যালি কি কি ভলিউম অফ ডিস্ট্রিবিউশন দিয়ে লোডিং ডোজ আর মেইনটেনেন্স ডোজ বাই দা ক্লিয়ারেন্স কোন কোন ইউনিটটা লাগবে সেগুলো খেয়াল রাখতে হবে এমন হতে পারে তোমার চারটি ইউনিটই দিয়ে দিলো ভলিউম অফ ডিস্ট্রিবিউশন এত ক্লিয়ারেন্স এত কনসেন্ট্রেশন টু বি অ্যাচিভ এত আর হচ্ছে তোমার বায়োঅ্যাভেলেবিলিটি এত ঠিক আছে নাও ইউ ক্যালকুলেট মেইনটেনেন্স ডোজ তোমার কোন কোন প্যারামিটার কোথায় নিতে হবে সেটা মাথায় রাখতে হবে নাও देयर উইল বি অ্যানাদার ক্যাচ দ্য ড্রাগ উইল গিভ ইন ইন দা আইভি তারও ওরাল বায়োঅ্যাভেলেবিলিটি দেওয়া থাকতে পারে তখন কিন্তু তোমায় দেখতে হবে তুমি ওরাল ড্রাগ দিচ্ছ না ইন্টারভেনাস ড্রাগ দিচ্ছ তোমার একটা একটা বায়োঅ্যাভেলেবিলিটি দেয়া রইল কিন্তু সেটা টু মিসলিড ইউ ক্লিয়ার কারণ ইন্টারভেনাস ড্রাগ দিতে গেলে তোমাকে বায়োবিলিটি নিয়ে চিন্তা করতে হবে না দ্যাট ইজ আ 100% বায়োবিলিটি বাট তোমাকে এত কটা প্যারামিটার দেয়া হলো তোমাকে এবার তার মধ্যে থেকে চুজ করতে হবে তোমার কোনটা কোনটা লাগবে ঠিক আছে ফার্মাকোলজিতে তখন আসবে যখন বলবে যে দা ড্রাগ ইজ গিভেন ইন ইন্টারভেনাস রুট অর ইমার্জেন্সি ড্রাগ ইমার্জেন্সি ড্রাগ উই প্রেফার ইন্টারভেনাস রুট বা গিভ এ ড্রাগ হুইচ হ্যাজ doesn't has a oral preparation also there are some drugs they doesn't have a oral preparation clear then when a biology they are talking about biology don't consider biology clear tale ajker puro class te ki ki tomake mone rakhte hobe number 1 bolo ses theke arambho koro dukana equation mone rakhte hobe maintenance dose loading dose what is t half how we can calculate t half ঠিক আছে then what is first order and zero order kinetics which drug mostly follows zero order kinetic what are the drugs can follows zero order kinetics clear what are the roots what are roots of elimination what are the roots of elimination 
আর কি মনে রাখতে হবে এগুলো মনে রাখলে মোটামুটি হবে আর আর একটা there are few drugs which can be eliminate without metabolism example example ঠিক আছে কি एग्जांपल লিথিয়াম ইউজড ইন লিথিয়াম ইউজড ইন বাইপোলার ডিজঅর্ডার 